Hello everybody. We are here today to talk about uh, two topics. For the first one, I decided to choose this question to ask uh, to the talker because uh, when I was uh, trying to find an interesting topic, I was really surprised because everybody on the Telegram channel was speaking about Niger and absolutely nobody was speaking about the situation in Ukraine. So the first question for everybody here is going to be this one. Why everybody is more interested in Niger and the uh, CDSAO's tension more than uh, in the Ukrainian uh, great offensive? That's my first question. And uh, since we are today uh, only three of us, I'm going to take a more active part uh, in this discussion. Uh, firstly, I wanted to, to say about Niger that if you are interested in the news about Niger on the what everybody here think about directly the, the tension, the increasing tension in this area, I recommend for you to watch the open mic because uh, each of us were uh, on this one and uh, we speak uh, a lot about uh, the Niger problem. So today we are just going to focus on this question and the, new, the uh, focus of the news on for ourselves has changed from Ukraine to somewhere else, basically, on this instance, uh, Niger. I'm going to answer for myself, of course, and uh, it's just my point of view. But for me, the first reason why this focus change is because it's new. And uh, the Ukraine war has uh, begun, uh, what, uh, 18 months ago, something like that. But the Niger tension as uh, the coup in Niger is something that is really new. So in the news cycle, even for ourselves, even if we don't try to follow too much the mainstream media, we are attracted by what is new. So I'm interested in what's happening in Niger now. And the second reason I see it's uh, something that is really sad and uh, maybe I'm disappointed in myself just for thinking about it, is that the war in Ukraine is now boring. Nothing is happening there. It's very sad. And... Um, if you look uh, at the Niger map uh, with this kind of zoom, like uh, this one, okay, and you try to, to draw the, the front line, in the last two months, you are not going to see any change in the front line because the, change, uh, the front line change, of course, but so small, the change was so small that it's uh, the draw that we're going to to make for the front line is going to be larger than the change. You are not going to be able to see them, basically. Nothing happened if you try to zoom out the map in Ukraine. It's boring, like I said. That's the third reason. And the, the third reason is because I think the Ukrainian conflict is something that is really global for the whole world. Whatever happened militarily uh, speaking in the conflict, there is an impact in uh, everywhere in the world. Each country has consequences about the world, especially Europe, where I live now. And that's going to, to, to be my transition for the next question after this one. But first, I want to, to know what Pata think uh, about my first question. Oh, you shouldn't. Uh, Thank you. Okay, so I kind of try to analyze the way things happen and the following of the different... Uh, the different sequence of events. And one of the things I noticed is that, okay, you're very right, this is something new, uh, but not exactly in the first day. So because more or less the, the cube happened on the 26th, there was some news about it more or less on the 27, 28, but it was around the 1st of, uh, of August that things got to become really more intense. So my, my feeling was this was a local conflict that didn't have the potential to grow more. And suddenly it started to grow in terms of the intervenient players that were showing themselves as interested on the, on the, on the, the, the sequence of events. Uh, I think in, if we go to the open mic, it was 
almost everybody is is and most uh, uh, political observers and uh, and so on and even the declarations of different states this conflict is a local conflict the forces to that it came from it are internal they were not really in, international players uh, uh, developing it at least not for now to be proof of and the interesting thing is that very suddenly many interests came about and i think um, the starting point was when the french government made some threats to due to a, a manifestation in front of the french embassy which was very almost spontaneous and they were showing russian flags and throwing stones to the french embassy and the french em diplomats reacted too fast and, and macron convocated his security security council and made a threat if you do something we'll respond in, in, in with all the force we can and this was very stupid because the conflict turned into a very anti-French conflict immediately after that. The CSS uh, ECOVAS also met on emer emergency, uh, had an emergency summit to deal with the, with the conflict, to, to understand what to do with it. Okay, there is a whole sequence of things behind. It doesn't matter, but what it's, it really matters is that ECOVAS, in the same summit, decided to also make a, mili a, a, a military uh, threat to the new coup, uh, to the authorities of the new coup. And this uh, um, created suddenly um, a kind of ex uh, geographic expansion. I think we all were, were uh, informed about the fact that Burkina Faso and Mali immediately said they would help the Niger uh, militaries with also with force, they would collaborate with it, they would consider it an invasion, a foreign invasion of uh, Niger as uh, Niger, as, um, as a declaration of war to themselves. So we have immediately the blo a creation of a blocks, uh, of uh, action blocks. We had Burkina uh, Cote d'Ivoire, which is the country of uh, Alpha Diallo. I hope he explained us more about this. Uh, um, uh, Guinea, uh, uh, Guinea Conakry, which is also under sanctions of the of the ECOVAS, because they also had a coup recently. Uh, they had uh, also a very strong uh, communique saying that these sanctions were unimane. So we we had these things happening in a very very a very short period of time. I think the press was needing something new. So Shadow is pretty right. I, I corroborate what was he saying. But I also saw many many uh, Asians uh, actually preparing for something bigger. In the meantime, I think things slow down a bit and things are a bit more quiet. But at a certain point, especially uh, as to Sunday, last Sunday when the, when the, uh, the ultimatum from oh, Ecovaz was done. How about my question? It, yes. Why yes, my question, follow why? More? I think there is an... Well, the, the 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 media has this 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 need to get something new because they are a bit tired of always the same news rep reproducing the same. On the other side, I see some interest of global powers, especially actually just the European Union, the U.S., the ECOVAS, with a kind of uh, um, a, a enemy they have in in, uh, in in mind, which is not there, which is Russia or the Wagner Group. And they are moving as well in you know, order, okay, let's not let this happening. We have to stop this. And this has to do with the Ukrainian war, obviously, the expansion of Russian influence in the world, because it's, in my perspective, the reason why Ukraine happened is the sudden expansion of uh, uh, power of Russia, influence of Russia in the world and China. And I think some chancellors in Europe thought, I'm not sure, but I think in some in the minds of the strategists, there was also the idea that perhaps Niger could offer the possibility of escape from the Ukrainian war. I'm not sure, but it looks pretty much like that as well. So that was my point. Also, in the same time, I think the reaction of Ukraine trying to gain attention again with, uh, with uh, military actions that didn't make much sense in terms of war strategy, I think also uh, created this idea. Well, Ukraine is desperate. This is not so interesting. Let's we'll talk. To, uh, let's look at Niger, Niger, because something is happening there. I think it's not going to happen, fortunately. But that's my um, feeling. 
<laughs> so, Alpha, what do you think yeah. about my question? So, basically, what I would say to add to it, because he already said a lot, to add to it, it's like uh, uh, most of the, the reason why I believe why everybody like focus, trying to focus on what's going on in Israel, you have to understand this multiple other countries that are already overthrown, like, you know, like uh, the own leaders, the all like, uh, French colonies, like starting from uh, 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 Mali and then go to Burkina and then in Guinea Conakry, where I'm from. So now it's like Nizel, it's like it's like literally it's like a be belt of coup. That, that's what they call it now, basically, because all these countries are usually was French uh, uh, colonized. Uh, they also uh, the other thing is that because the reason why it's more higher intention and why everybody is talking about it is because it's like the effect of the energy that can affect the world. Like I remember when Guinea overthrew the uh, the coup, uh, like the because we have like somewhere like 40 to 50 percent of the aluminium, the price jumped because everybody think that oh, they make the, the, the leaders going to just close everything. But he did not do did that because he let everything work. But here in Israel, they close everything. They didn't let anything like they, they didn't let anybody mind like the uh, the uh, the thing that they used like France to use to, to build to build like for the electricity. So they basically make it even more uh, difficult for, uh, you know, uh, uh, let me just go a little bit back. So basically, that made it a big threat to France. Basically, if you understand what what happened in Ukraine, uh, uh, Russia, uh, like the the oil pipe that was uh, uh, the gas pipe that was broken down, now it's like it's like even more harder for France to get more energy because this is one of the things that they have right now that they use as energy. So when France said that, oh, if uh, if if our uh, interests get uh, 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 if our interests get threatened. We will involve. We will do anything that our our uh, our our power to like to end that is make even more African people like. Okay, what's, what are you talking about? What is your interest in Africa? What is your what is your interest in Israel for specifically? He said beside of you have a military bases there and your embassy. You understand what I mean? So that's what I have to say for right now. Then I can say more more later after. Okay, do. Yeah. Do you follow the question, or do you need uh, me to repeat? Yes. Uh, no, I, I, I understand the question. Uh, my perspective is, uh, as I laid out in the open mic, is that, well, uh, I'll, 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 uh, I'll go a little bit deeper uh, here. Uh, basically, if you, um, okay, if you take it from the perspective of a person that's running a media company, what is what does that person's interest uh, entail? He basically wants increased in viewership so that they get more money, more, more advertisements. So what what uh, what causes people to turn the TV off and not watch your channel is is saying something that they that makes them feel sad or makes them feel bad. So a, a, a failing offensive in the Ukraine is something that not none of the media uh, outlets want to show because it makes the people in the Western economies, which is their main audience for the English language media, feel bad. So they will they would want to kind of just turn off the TV and go do something else, right? So that reduces their viewership. So they need to find something else to replace this uh, bad news. So uh, just coincidentally, uh, Niger had a coup, and um, among many other uh, coups and, and conflicts and whatever in Africa. So what else What else sells? Um, fear. Fear sells. So... If you are, you know, uncertainty sells. So people will turn the news on to, to, to look at something that they, 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 they didn't realize was going on that might affect their lives. And Niger is one of those things, which because of its large uranium uh, supply to France and, 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 you know, because of the U.S. base there. So people will, would want to tune in to look at this new piece. So the politicians from their point of view in the Western uh, media, uh, sorry, in the Western sphere, they are, they are not going to uh, disrupt this uh, interest. They are not going to disrupt this uh, this, uh, this attempt to try to move the new cycle towards Niger because for them, that's a good thing. They, they want to talk less about Ukraine now because it's failing, right? They want to talk about anything else other than Ukraine. So now that the media has focused in on Niger, that's a good thing for them. So they are, they are, they are going to encourage this. So uh, uh, like uh, Prata said, 
so Zelensky also knows this is happening, and so he's desperate to try to find some way to show the, the present good news to the West. So he's doing silly things like throwing missiles at bridges that does that do nothing. You know, he's trying to you know he's doing like uh, incursions in the Belgorod and things. Anything he can do to 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 show that okay, you know, it's not going horribly wrong. It, it, we, we are still advancing. Uh, uh, so it's it's all about. It's all about views, really. It's all about uh, the media want more to get uh, find a way to, to to prevent its audience from turning off from the bad news and giving them some something else to, 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 to worry about so that they will keep coming back for more news. Yeah, that's why in the media it, it, the, the, it, we can see this shift. It doesn't mean that Ukraine's uh, offensive or anything is dying down. They're just not reporting it. Okay, can I just add something quick? Yes, of course. So basically, like the other thing that I feel like everybody's like more focusing on what's going on in, in, in uh, right now in this area, you have to understand that ECOWAS is really uh, uh, like 15 different countries. And before they had the troop, before in Sierra Leone, when they had the civil war, I've been to Sierra Leone right after, the, like around like 2001, while right, right with the free, uh, free, free town, like the, if you know Sierra Leone, you should know where Free Town is. So the, a lot of people used to tell me stories. I don't know if this is, a, this is accurate. They used to say that uh, 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 a lot of those Nigerian soldiers, they are very, very, uh, 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 they, they basically, they, they do terrible things to people. Basically, if, they, if you are accused as a rebel, if you know rebels was the people that in, in Sierra Leone that was cutting out people's hands, chopping people's heads, so if they if they say if they accuse you at that, they will tie your hand in the back to a point where you can't you can even breathe, and they will throw you in, inside the vents and take you with you, and then nobody gonna find you anymore unless they find your body somewhere else. So now that they like when uh, uh, Ecowas is threatening to involve in uh, in Israel, it's some people in in Africa that know that type of issue, they realize oh yeah maybe it's gonna be the same situation in Israel because they. Those they're very very brutal like soldiers, so they they when when they have it, like a, a, they decide to attack, they don't care if when whenever they meet young people they will usually cut them or kill them usually they they will say maybe you're a robber or maybe here now it's gonna be like the soldiers because you have to understand if you if you're going to free off like a, 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 a if you like definitely say that you're gonna put the the, the past leader now in, in power. And you're going against the military. Who who is gonna defend the uh, the country after if you go after the military? Are you just gonna leave the country to for to love this terrorist group to come and attack? Because if you if you if you take down all the military power that right now they have, they are basically making it easier for the this uh, all this terrorist group to get in. And also it make more issues for Western country too because there will be a lot of migration coming from West Africa, definitely going to Europe. As you understand, like right now, a lot of people from Africa are moving away from uh, many countries here, like like in Guinea, especially and Mali and all the other countries, going to Europe. You know, because they say that there's no better, there's no good opportunity in Africa. They don't have like a, 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 a good infrastructures, and the, the government is corrupt. It, this is all the reason why the schools in Africa, first of all, especially in, in French countries. Now, remember, you have to understand these people that migrate, they already have the blueprint to get to Europe and America. So if this goes go even crazier, there will be more people migrating. Even I, for my own, uh, 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 what I think, pro minimum at least like one, one to two million people probably going to go to Europe and, 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 uh, and America if this happens. So it's going to be really, really chaos. So you have to understand. And also you have to understand, like, especially like in Guinea, alone, like as I said, they, they produce like somewhere for like 40 to 50 percent of aluminium in the world. So that would affect all the, uh, uh, that would definitely affect all the market too. And Nigeria too produce like oil and gas, if I'm not wrong. So you have to understand all these countries in this area, they have a lot of resources that connect to the global market too. So that's what I wanted to add for now. Okay. Is anyone, is someone uh, has a uh, somewhat um, whatever this question? Just country. But these countries definitely have something to aid in terms of their influence in the world. What is more interesting exactly about uh, 
these countries is that if they play that role in uh, in geopolitics and economics and global economics, why were they so uh, invisible to us before? But what is more impressive about Niger is a country that was never under the Soviet uh, influence for me, which is the enigma. They always cooperating with uh, with France, especially in the last ten years with the European Union. How come they have no infrastructure at all? How come this country is one of the poorest countries in in um, uh, in Africa? How come this country has the lowest human development index from the Europe from the United Nations? in the world. I find it very, very strange in the way and simplifying it sometimes uh, with uh, with, low, with geo uh, geopolitical um, interests is quite, um, is quite inhumane in a way because these populations are so, so poor. And when I saw the um, special envoy of the European Union, by the way, uh, 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 Mr. Emmanuel de, uh, Del Rey, She's an Italian woman. She flew, she flew um, on express to uh, Abidjan for the last summit in the CDCO. She said, like, the, the, the sanctions of the CDCO are, are going right. There is almost no food and medicines. So she, she is actually was saying, well, this is working. This is working. We are going to have a humanitarian catastrophe in these countries. This is working. Where is, where is these people? How can they? Okay, of course, uh, I know Drew will immediately make me a reality check and say, well, this is normal. But sometimes I, I think we can invoke a little bit of moral just to, just to, to I don't know. I think what uh, is the same thing as as uh, in Ukraine, Zelensky asked uh, his troops to risk their lives just to regain uh, media focus on his own country. Yes. Basically, oh, yeah. he sent sol his own soldier to, to be killed by the Russian troops just for media attention. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing. The top politi yeah, was... political leader don't care about the life uh, of the very uh, lowest level guy under this uh, order. Yeah, morals are for us to feel better <laughs> about ourselves. They, they, it doesn't factor into the population. What happened in Niger and most of Africa is is what's, it's, it's just plain old exploitation. Then the countries that let them uh, exploit more, they will do it more. It's, it's they, there is no, you know, let's save the Africans, you know, they are so poor. That, that is just marketing to make you donate money, you know. At, a, at the end of the day, the reason Europe has so much uh, wealth, a large part of it is stolen from the rest of the world. Of course, that's, that's, that's the reality of the situation. We made a great, uh, we made a great uh, open um, the, a chat about uh, Angola, and we were trying to um, uh, schematize the Chinese development, um, the, the Chinese investment in Africa. And one of the things, kind of conclusion, we understood was that the difference between the European and the Western, let's say, Western investment in Africa is that the Westerns in, invest mostly in ways to uh, just extract something, um, sometimes to make a political influence. And the Chinese, mm -hmm. yes, they go there for extracts as well, but they try to create somehow new uh, commercial, commercial routes that will enable for them to sell their products. So uh, Chinese is a mostly a uh, thing, yeah, the one I, I think you're giving the Chinese too much credit. The Chinese no, are I'm... not there. They, they have the same objective, to extract as much from Africa as possible. The only difference is this. In Europe, their, their, their time horizon is maybe the next 100 years. So they are going to, they are going to, you know, if your time horizon is that short, you're going to go in, take everything, and that's it. But for the Chinese, their time horizon is the next thousand years. They are, they are thousand year old, thousands of years civilization. They are looking in the long term. So if you want to extract as much as possible from Africa, what you don't, if you go in and take everything, you only get a little bit. But if you go in and develop it, you know, develop Africa and give them a middle class, suddenly you have a new trading partner and you can, you can, you know, you can, you can actually develop prosperity together and in the long run you actually extract more from Africa. 
So it's all about extracting stuff from Africa, but it's just that the Chinese one, just methodology just happens to to, to uh, result in a better uh, a better life for Africans as well in the short run and in the long run. See, their, 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 their view is so far out that they, they are building things right now so they benefit later. It's, yeah, it's, all, it's, all, it's all about extracting. So I, I see what you say because... In and they're creating new markets. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I see new markets. Yeah. So I, I see what you say because in Guinea, like it, the Chinese people build like a, 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 a electricity dam for Guinea and, and some roads. So basically it's much easier to, to you know, to, to use that to, you know, to get the resources from more, more in Cancan and, and all, all those low, because most of this location where these resources are, is like a, like maybe like 50 to 100 miles above, away from the, like the capitals. So it's so much yeah. easier to bring it to the port because in Guinea, the port is in the city. You have to understand uh, that. Uh, so, yeah. uh, Shadovi, you have to show Guinea Conakry, not Bissau. <laughs> Guinea yes. Conakry. Guinea Conakry, <laughs> Guinea Conakry not Bissau. <laughs> yeah. Sorry there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Conakry is on the, so the harbor, the harbor is on the, on the city, you were saying? Yeah. So basically the, the, uh, the port, most of the port, like, like where the, uh, the, the, uh, the ship, all these, like this raw materials is, is like in the capital. But before, way back before that, the, the French already built like a railroad that can carry all the other things. But now Chinese people is making it a bit more easier way, like, you know, have, you need to have electricity to even produce more. And then, you know, they have roads now. It's more, if you make it much easier to, you know, to move from the city, like going all the way to, from, from, like, from where these resources are, they have to go to the city. So it's making yes, it I, I, There is this project of the trans This yeah. is the construction of the rail line that is going to, that is going from, from a port to the south of Conakry, perhaps because of that problem. They are building yeah. a very big uh, new containers port. And the tram line is going to go to uh, a huge site. It's going to be one of the biggest uh, mines of iron ore. Yeah, uh, yeah, a huge exactly. concentration of ore. And yeah. I, I was very interested in this project. I tried to look into it. It's quite impressive. Yeah. The, the, the mines are mostly, uh, are going mostly to be explored by Rio Tinto. And the Chinese also have some, some sections for them, but it's still, it's not the, the it's still not the objective, the objective was to create uh, this tram line, which is mostly created by them. And in doing so, they uh, created uh, school cor uh, courses in university to, uh, to form engineers. And they are already yeah. constructing the, the, tra the, the, the tracks. And I was surprised. Yeah. 30, 30, uh, 13 Chinese engineers and 70 uh, Guinean uh, engineers. So the, before, if we talk about the first investments of China in Africa, this was mostly Chinese people coming and constructing everything. They wouldn't, they were not very keen in employing local people. But what really changed, uh, what was the fact that now they really employ and form local people to... We cut off the... <laughs> we lost it. So just to continue what he said, like, yeah, just yeah. to continue what he was saying, like uh, when they just like when they discovered that Guinea had like a uh, like a uh, iron ore that like it's like sixty percent iron, basically it's like really really huge location. So as he was saying, now Chinese people and other countries wanted to get that. So <laughs> as he was explaining, now they're trying to even increase the where would be. Because it's usually Guinea use more well road to like to export like the uh, uh, bus 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 kit that as we say in French, so uh, that's what used for aluminium. So now plus the iron and all the other resources like gold, diamonds, because they have all that type of stuff. So it much be much easier just to ship it through the railroad to get to the like as I said the uh, the port like the port is in the capital in Conakry. So, and most of these uh, locations that where they do all these industries, like really, really far away from it. Yeah, I guess my point is that, um, you know, for 
the, the Africans is shouldn't be too uh, naive in the sense that they, 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 they had a bad experience with the colonizers, the Western colonizers. And then now they have this uh, new uh, bunch of the Chinese or even the Russians who are coming in. They, they, you shouldn't be naive to think that, oh, they're here to save us. They're, they're not there to save Africans. They are, they're there for their own personal interests. So the African political uh, parties, political leaders need to, need to, do, need to look out for the African interests. Like negotiate deals, sure, you sell your uh, raw materials, but do it in a, such a way that benefits the people of Africa. The Chinese are not going to care about that. The Chinese are going to care about how can I get, you know, as, 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 as much out of this deal as possible in the short run and the long run. So they're not going to destroy you to get what they want because that will hurt their long run goals, right? But they, so they're going to be, it, it's a happy coincidence. But it, it, it doesn't mean that the, the African leaders can just sit back and go, okay, let the Chinese come and, you know, they, they have our interests at heart. That, that's, that's nonsense. At every, in, in a proper multipolar world, all the political leaders need to uh, look. Their, their objective is to improve the, 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 the welfare of their people. Their objective is not to improve the welfare of everybody else, right? So the Chinese government's job is to improve the welfare of their own people. If they are looking out to improve the job, the welfare of the African people, they are not doing their job. So the job of the African political leaders is to look out for the African people. Yeah. So then you negotiate on those terms, then you will get win-win solutions. Okay, just to add to what you're saying, because the reason why I believe many African leaders like to work with China is because they don't feel like China is telling them everything to do. China is like, usually it's like, we do business. We're here for business. We don't care about your politics, your belief, anything like that. But when America and, and uh, Western country goes there, they come with like other uh, agendas, basically. So you have to do this for us to give you this. You know, it make it even, some of them like, oh, you know what? Why are you telling me what to do? I told them I'm a free, I'm a free uh, leader it's for my country. I'm like, I, my people vote for me to, you know, to, to lead them. Why are you telling me what to do? You understand? So that's what a lot of these African leaders and African countries believe to work with more China. As you're saying, they are planning for long term, but many of these Western countries, they just come here to grab, 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 because most of the, most of the people that they have contact with is like a, a, a corporations. You know, corporations every year or every six months, you need to bring your receipt to show what, how much money you make, how much money you lose, you know, all that stuff. For you, for your stocks to go up in, in here in Wall Street in New York, you understand? So yes. for hundred years, that's that's not nobody gonna invest on you for that. For for a thousand years, nobody gonna invest on your business for that. I think even, even, yeah. I think what I think what is new in Africa is that we have more more partners, and these new more partners are actually entering competition. And this creates competition, creates a more healthy uh, business environment for everybody, actually. Uh, we also saw, uh, see the, the growth of a new uh, African elite, economically elite, not just politi politician elite. And they also uh, want to make uh, business and they want to choose their business partners not based on politics as well. So this is also another thing that I think many Africans are, are looking at looking for is to make uh, so that it, investment is not so dependent on diplomacy of uh, bigger countries on financing just from these institutions that uh, uh, will um, make the investment dependent on you working with this or that company, but a bit more free, a bit more open, more, um, uh, more also more constructive, because if there is competition, surely the investment will be more constructive. Everybody has to gain. I think this is, would be interesting if Europeans could also understand this for their own sake. Otherwise, it's going to happen what we see in Niger, which is very possible. They're going to be kicked out. But mm -hmm. instead of working with everybody around that is also there, they might be kicked out because they don't understand this type of... Uh, the world now is... People now are much more... Uh, have much more open eyes. They can see what's happening. They can read the same things we write. 
So we live in this globalized world. And uh, one of the things about this Niger, Niger conflict, Niger conflict, I have the feeling is that Africans are talking about Africa again and a new perspective of what they actually want for the future. So it's not just us European looking more to Niger instead of Ukraine. I think there is also a, auto, uh, um, some parts of the world getting away from this conflict and actually looking at themselves. And we are wasting time with this uh, fair divers. We have to look at the problems we have at home. Uh, and, and also is that also because like many people say, see, like as you look at the uh, uh, when those people come outside, those young people, they usually have like Russian flags. But in Guinea, they can say that they, can, they don't care about that because Guinea used to have a relationship with Soviet Union way back. So it's completely be different. So the reason why like French see that as a threat on the side because you have to remember Mali, they had a flag, Russian flag, while they're burning French flags. Same thing in Burkina Faso. So basically, they see it as a way as okay, this they just respect disrespecting us. Basically, mm. maybe maybe something Russia have to do it. So that's why they say that okay, whenever they get kicked out, who get who, who replacing them? Uh, Wagner. You understand the like Russian backed uh, uh, private military. You, that's why they feel like it's more threat. Now they come only to Niger. Niger is like uh, where they have many of the soldiers now. You have to understand because when they get kicked out in Burkina Faso and Mali, that's where they the soldiers have to go. And then if they keep moving back and back, they have much, they, they may end up having nowhere to go anymore in Africa if this keeps happening. And also, like many of these leaders in Africa, they are afraid of the, uh, uh, what's going on in Niger because they feel like they're going to be next. So for them to like to end these schools like happening, it's like for them to like hit the hammer directly to the uh, uh, Niger to show that as an example. You cannot do that. But for them doing that, I believe it will even hurt them more because many of these countries in Africa, and especially West Africa, they, they definitely uh, uh, need the backing of the military. If the military decided not to do it, guess what? They, they definitely match him to the, where the president is and take, take him out. Either put him in jail or maybe kill him. That's why, so, like, no, this, that's, yeah. So, what so I Drew, yeah. Drew, I would like to ask you a question. So, in your perspective, um, all this me me medial conflict, who is, it going to, who is going to profit from it? Or who is profiting at the moment with, uh, <laughs> with this uh, circus? You mean Mediatic circus. Cool? Yes. I, no, uh, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, it's, it's all, <laughs> Africa has always been very, very messy. Uh, from my perspective, like coups happen all the time. Like there, there's always like small little skirmishes here and there, border disputes and whatnot. And uh, it's it's none none of the large powers. Like if you're looking at global geopolitics, is really going to be affected by this. I mean, even France, if they lose their uranium supply from Niger, no, get, we are not going to lose it. Yeah, they no. Even if they do. It doesn't really matter. There is a spot market for for uranium. It's not like there is a, there is no other supply. Uh, there, there there is there is uh, enough supply to go around. And if they lose their you know it's it's just like the European Union and their oil from oil and gas from Russia. They lose that. Russia just sells to China. China doesn't buy from somebody else. Somebody else will sell to Europe. It, it, you know the same minerals will just move around, and France will just pay a higher price for the same thing. And they can just print money to pay for it. So at the end of the day, this is uh, from on a global geopolitical perspective, Niger is just a distraction, and it's a welcome distraction for the Western media, uh, but a distraction nonetheless. It's not. It's not really. I think it's going to kick off simply because they need something. Uh, the, the U.S. Uh, doesn't want to fight large wars, uh, large scale wars in Ukraine anymore because it realizes that it doesn't really have the industrial capacity to do that. So he wants to go back to fighting all these small uh, 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 proxy wars against Russia. Uh, so uh, if uh, if uh, the uh, Russia doesn't get involved, and uh, that includes uh, the uh, Wagner, I, I, then there, I think there's a lower probability of it kicking off. But if Niger and I think that's happening already, actually gets Wagner into uh, Niger, that, uh, 
as to me that increases the possibility of them uh, invading because they that creates a new front in their global proxy war, and uh, it's in a it's an area that the U.S. really likes to fight in, in the Middle East and Africa. They, they they have their bases there. They they like to fight all these small skirmishes. That's all their equipment and uh, is is tuned towards. So mm. yeah, I, I, unfortunately. Wagner going into Niger increases the chance of them fighting in Niger. And it is low cost. Yes, As exactly. Compared to a few thousand people want... versus a few hundred thousand people kind of conflict, you know? I just wanted to add something about the situation in Niger. And I already said that in the open mic uh, the Saturday. But you have to understand something. Most of the population of Niger is in the south, okay? And when I say most, I should say all of the population of Niger because the other part of the country is mainly a vast desert. The uranium mine has the three dots, basically. The three uh, cross I draw here, okay? So to come from Niamey, the capital, to the uranium mine, you need to pass by Agadez. Agadez is exactly where there is the new shiny, very expensive U.S. base. And uh, near Arlit, you have the French uh, military too, okay? There is another uh, military base near Niamey, the capital, at the airport. My own opinion is that the French and USA are going to evacuate the Niamey base near the airport and uh, give this victory to the junta uh, in uh, Niamey. But they are going to keep everything in the north. And uh, there is an invisible uh, magic uh, line in the desert, somewhere like that. And if a military unit, a very serious one from Niger, try to cross this line, then I think the USA and the French army is going to destroy this unit. I'm not so sure. My own that opinion French... about that. My own opinion mm. about that. Mm. Is that the the people, uh, the political leader in Yemen know everything about these things? You have to understand that the actual leaders is not a new guy. He was uh, uh, already the leader of the presidential guard for the previous president. That means that he is in power position for a long time now, and he understands everything about that. So I hmm. don't think he's going to send his own military to the north. And he's doing to continue to make his political uh, speech and his, uh, uh, maybe to invite Wagner in the south of the country, but they are not going to disturb the things happening in the north about the U.S. base on the French uranium mine. That's so, what I so think. Maybe I'm wrong. Is the mask is coming off? Okay, just imagine, huh? uh, U.S. You know has a mine in Canada that's in physically in Canada. And he has troops around there, and it just takes stuff from there without paying the Canadians anything. And if the Canadians try to move their military in, the US will bomb the Canadian convoy. You Drew, see how absurd that sounds. Drew, this, it's very this, sad, this but it's is, even worse than it's, that. It's even worse than that exactly because when what you are saying, you are forgetting feeling. about the nuclear toxic waste that the French, uh, the French company Orano, Orano, is one of the worst in the world. They are basically destroying the whole area in this place here. There is a large yeah. uh, mountain with toxic nuclear waste that they are creating. It's really some, something uh, absolutely horrible for this country, what they are doing there. And uh, pff, they don't care because there is not but, a lot of population, but it's even worse what you think, uh, Drew. I, I think it's not very easy for the Nigerian government, even after the coup, to, um, to really... Um, uh, re, uh, renegotiate the new contracts because they are under international uh, investment law and this is very complicated and that's probably the last thing they want to touch in. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, so I don't see, I don't really see a dangerous for the Iranian minds of the French unless the French uh, actually feel they have to leave. But um, the thing about the Americans and the French is, as far as I could see, I don't think there is um, alignment between both. They don't want very different things, but they are not aligning. What the French and the, uh, the French want to continue their geo their old-fashioned geopolitical uh, control somehow over these countries, 
uh, the Americans are not interested on it. They are more interested on keeping actually their military base, and that's it. Mm. That's true. That's exactly so, true. Just to add, just to yeah. add to that, I'm just wondering why why this always all these leaders that 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 do this course are always meeting meeting U.S. members before the the two weeks or one month later this the coup in the country. You know, because most of this military, like especially like in Guinea, uh, 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 the 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 junta met with the, uh, uh, the one of the state or uh, one of the uh, uh, people from America here in, in one of the embassy before they started the coup. So same thing as I heard in, 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 in New Zealand, that same thing happened in New Zealand. And most of all these people that they, they, that cause all, do all these coups, they are trained by Western countries. It's like, what did they do for them enough to try to overthrow this, these leaders, you know? And uh, as you were talking about the, uh, the, uh, the military bases, in, like America have a lot of military bases, not just in Israel, but it's one of the biggest one in, in, in Africa, you know? So America, maybe they can lose that one and they still have more left. But France, it's like almost like this is the one that they cannot lose anymore because the person that they had in power before is like somebody that they really, really trust and had like, it's like the, like, it's like the fine boy, basically. So they can, if they lose their fine boy, like who, the, those are the other ones that didn't like them. You understand? That's one of the other issues too they had. Yes, yes sure. So like for the I U.S., said, the, the base is very important. And for the French, I don't think it's just about the Iranian mines. Uh, I think there is better places in the world to get even or with better uh, quality of a uh, bigger quantity of, uh, of, of uranium in it. Uh, what what uh, Shadovi said is very true. It's because in Niger, this was in the desert, and they could do whatever they want, and they just they didn't care about uh, environmental consequences. This might have been important for uranium to do it a bit cheaper. But in terms of uranium, uranium, they can find in the near countries in Chad, in Egypt, also good place or Algeria, good places to extract uranium. This uh, this machinery. It's uh, it's movable actually. It's not so difficult to take from one place to another. Uh, definitely, the thing for uranium. I'm sorry, Pata, but there is mainly four people, four country who has really uh, who has really important uh, mining operations for uranium: Australia, mm-hmm. Niger, Kazakhstan, and Canada. Sure, but there are more. Uh, there are more deposits all over the world. Yes, they just course. haven't been developed. They just haven't been developed because. If you look at Canada and Australia, they have huge mining companies. If you look at uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, this is Rosaton. These are Russian mining companies mostly. And if you look at um, Niger uh, and uh, Shad, which we are also going to start to extract, to extract uh, uh, uranium, they actually these are Western companies, Western mining companies. They have more places where to go. They just didn't develop. Okay, so it's time, time to, to change, uh, to go to the other topic. <laughs> so I'm really happy that we are able to, to chat about all these things because I learn a lot of things. The other topics is more uh, on the economical side. That's why I'm very happy that uh, Duo is with us today because he's really good with economy. And uh, it's a question about uh, the state of the Western world economy. And the question is this one. If the war in Ukraine continue, and it's very sad, but I think it's going to last, personally, it's my point of view, to last at least for uh, more of you than uh, more of you years. And uh, how many years could the West world last if the war in Ukraine continue? At a moment or another, the West world may or may not have no longer any money to give to Ukraine. Because uh, today is going, it is cost uh, a lot of money for the West world to make war in Ukraine. So, what do you think about this one? I'm going to ask first uh, Poita. Yes, you are my first victim. <laughs> I've been also the first one. On the- Yes. Uh, anyways, because you know um, the best. Well, uh, Drew probably will tell you, well, as much as they can print money, there is no problem. 
I don't think in European Union that's very easy. It's very easy. They can do it, of course. Uh, we were, just, we were, me and Shadov, we were looking at stuff uh, to answer this question. We found this amazing uh, post from the European Investment Bank, which is even bigger than the, the World Bank. And they were giving 6.5 billion, 6, uh, 6.7 billion uh, euros to the uh, railway companies in Ukraine. Obviously, this is a huge amount. This is too big. But they were giving obviously to the, to the, because it's an investment bank. They can't just give it to the, to the, 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 the Ukrainian state. They were giving to a company that will make the distribution. It's amazing. So there are the, the, or oh, even the peace fund of the European Union. My personal Union estimation is that at least half of this money is going to be stolen by corrupted people in Ukraine. At oh, but half. that's obvious. You see, this is a machine. This is a machine, you see. Uh, the money gets from the from the treasuries in Europe, United States, and other countries, yes. And this money is then to use to finance many other activities, not just war, to finance uh, um, uh, MPs all over these countries to keep continue supporting the, the war, to finance public opinion uh, enterprises to keep making people really on, on the spot. And, and also to finance the politicians in Ukraine and military so they keep uh, seeing all their population dying like robots <laughs> on the flag. So it's, it's very sad, but it is what it is. I don't think money will last forever. Well, the problem is that Ukraine is very expensive as a war machine. It costs just, not just, not the war, but just the administrative machine of Ukraine because they have their economy completely destroyed, costs more or less 5 billion euros a month. 5 billion euros, dollars perhaps, it's not euros, but it's a different, uh, little difference, euros a month. So this is an immense amount. And I don't see them, uh, everybody still having this money so easily around. Well, the US can print very easily. The European Union is a bit more complicated. There's European Central Bank, it's a bit more complicated to find this money. What I find is that if we really see very bad economical figures in the European Union, especially uh, as we enter the winter, um, they, many countries start to restrain their 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 will to give more money to Ukraine. I have to so, stop you, Pata, uh, because uh, I think Drew is going to eat you alive if I do stop will, you on will, that speak. Course. Please, no, I was just, I going just to, want you, to and you. You are ready to jump, so speak. I'm, I'm going to finish and say like this. The, so, Ni Niger, the Niger conflict or any other that is coming soon will be perfect to make an escape. Uh, the other situation is I don't think the war will last that much longer anymore. There's too many things on stake at, at this point. So I think about October, uh, we'll start to see big changes. But perhaps I'm being too optimistic. So this is seeing future was, for Pata, some, nobody can. How many years? Well, I said October. Just a few months for you. For me, it's a few months. I, I, I don't yeah. ask you when the war is going to finish. I'm, going, I'm asking you, How many years could you pay for Ukraine? Oh, once the war is finished, no, no, my, no. Uh, my dear friend, once the war is finished, the European Union pro promised all these trillions to Ukraine. They are not going to give almost anything. Forget it. Yes, we all agree with that. This okay? empty That's promise. not my question. Yeah, my question is, is how many question. years could you pay for the war in Ukraine? For the war? I told you, yes. it's going to be over soon. Yes, And once I know, it's over, but that's not my question. Answer my question, well, please, but, uh... well, it will be October this year, not years, oh. months. Okay, okay, you don't want to answer. <laughs> I'm not going to oblige you to answer. So, no, do, I, 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 I hope you have an answer to my question. Yeah, I, I think they're still going to keep financing them even after the, if in let's say the war ended like today, they're still going to keep financing them. Like, because they will oh, yeah, yeah. Like to be. We have to build, that's finally like, okay, we need to rebuild. Because as you understand, uh, BlackRock already coming, okay, we want to invest in, in, in Ukraine. Like, how are you going to invest in Ukraine when there's still war going on? What are you going to invest in? Are you going to build like road, uh, buildings, hospitals that have been already destroyed? Or they get, are going to get attacked again? Or something like that, you know? That's what, that, that's, that, I, I think I understand what you're saying. Now, I think they're going to continue even after the war. So, 
that may have been in, in maybe in, in uh, 2010 to, uh, I don't think, no, maybe like three years after everybody forget about Ukraine, they, they pull off. They will pull out. Unless because it's because of Russia, they'll probably continue. Because, they, you know, they wanted to, as you understand, the war is about getting Russia in a bad situation. That's why many of the American, uh, <clears throat> whenever I hear from the politicians in America, they want to punish Russia. They want to punish Russia. You understand? So if you want to punish Russia, you can't wait until he's it, it's, it's about to go down and then you just give up. As American, they're like going to keep continuing. You know, even, even if they're losing more money, even if they're feeling pain, but they're like, you know what? I want him to feel more pain than me as I'm doing feeling the pain, basically. But it's, look, right now, it's like the other way around, to be honest, because uh, uh, many banks here in, in, the, uh, in the U.S., like a couple months ago, was going bankrupt. Like, as you know, First Republic uh, uh, Bank, they, they, like went down and 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 this other bank that was that used to invest on a uh, uh, tech companies in, in, in so like uh, 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 somewhere in in uh, uh in east no as you know like uh, san francisco basically them too they went down so and now the fed still keep uh, uh, uh increasing the uh fed rate like i used to i used to invest more on crypto everything went crash or going with that was that so People are people are really really like you know struggling here, especially in New York. Everything's like prices, everything is like really really high up. I used to live in Manhattan for 15 years, but I moved because I, it was prices going crazy. I moved to like Queens and Scott. In Manhattan, it was definitely crazy. It's like the prices like the, I, I moved. I went there. Something that I used to buy like for nine dollar, it was already level 50. I was like, what what happened? They told me, oh yeah, everything went up. I, like, I just, I just lived a couple of months ago. Wow, that, that's that soon, you know? So it's, everything is going crazy. So, And they're having issues with, uh, also with refugees. And then now, as you say, like, the world's going to happen in West Africa if it's going to even make it worse. Because African people, they're definitely going to come to America because they love America and they think America is like the land of opportunity as we America sell it to everybody. Then they would definitely come to America and they will definitely go to Europe and make it make everything even more worse. So that's all I'd like to add. Okay. okay. So uh, how many years? <laughs> My question was how many years, Alpha? Uh <laughs> until Russia went down as they think or they'll go down in between that. <laughs> Maybe okay. So for you it's going to they're going to pay for a lot of years. Lots the of years continue yeah. of course. If I think is right, uh, as, lo as, long, as long the politician is making money, they're definitely going to continue. Okay. So and, and, who... and when Americans uh, when Americans are still like voting for it, because the thing is, you have to understand in America, whenever like the people say they're going against it, then the politician will shift shift the other way around. But when, whenever like they feel like okay, yeah, they can still give, they can still squeeze some vote for me, and also they can still make some money for me. They will definitely do it, and also like the corporations backing them, because some of these corporations they make money when there's wars, when everybody's crying, but they're making money in America, based on what I understand. Okay, so Drew, how many years? Uh, let me uh, let me just uh, uh, disagree a bit with Prat what something with Prata said first, and then I'll get to your question. Uh, okay. So Prata said that after the war. Uh, None of the money that was promised is going to go to Ukraine. Uh, that's 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 actually, I think, the opposite of the truth. They will pump as much money there as possible. Uh, so you you can see what happened in Iraq and use it as an example. So they will promise to build this uh, a, a, a new uh, maybe a new highway uh, for 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 Ukraine or Iraq, right? And then this new highway is going to cost uh, maybe. $3 billion. And then they will have a bid for, you know, three companies and then they pick one. Of course, behind those three companies, if you follow the ownership level, you realize that all of them end up in US politicians, right? But of course, after many, many uh, loops, so company owns company, owns company owns company, and then eventually you, you follow the ownership path up, you realize that it ends up all US politicians. So this, 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 this uh, company get wins the bid, it comes in. It, it's, it, it hires engineers and, and, and machinery and whatnot, and that costs maybe, you know, a few few hundred million, right? And, oh, there's a big problem. 
the the the, the death, uh, there was some unforeseen problem. You know, this thing you know cost us uh, you know uh, two two billion dollars already, and it's still we we still only have one kilometer of the road because of unforeseen circumstances. Oops, sorry. Oh, but the contract says you still have to pay me. You know, even though I didn't build it, the contract says you still have to pay me two point five billion, not three billion, because three billion. I, I think Alpha is losing okay. because it uh, remained uh, Africa. That's exactly the same thing that's going to happen in, in Ukraine. A lot, a lot, a lot of money is going to be uh, uh, pushed into Ukraine. It's going to disappear into a black hole. And suddenly you realize your politicians got richer and you wonder, eh? Why? So, exactly the money like in never Africa. goes... Yeah, yes. the, the, the next day you're going to see one of the politicians there. flying in the, the private jet. Yeah, then you ask them where you get on that money never from. goes on the ground a little bit of it will all those engineers they are hired they will they will they will come and say yeah yeah it was a real project we were on the ground but the, you know the upper management uh you know they they already have a plan for it so that's why if you go to iraq today it's still a bombed up shithole after what two trillion dollars nothing that's nothing been built it's, it's exactly it's the all, same all, it's thing all, uh, you know the bait and switch No, it's worse because what, uh, what you are saying is that we are not your uh, Europe nation is not going to spend money, so there is no losses. What Do is saying is that uh, Western nation is going to lose this money, but Ukraine is not going to have it. It's the worst situation. So, I think so uh, how to, many uh, years? <laughs> Because it was my question, uh, but nobody wants to answer it. I'm very sad. Uh, okay, I'll try to. I try to answer it, but I don't have yes. a, a, a strong prediction. So basically, yes. uh, we need to understand that we need to separate two things. Okay, when 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 the U.S. says that it's it's uh, it's sending money to Ukraine to fund the war, it's not actually doing that. All it's of doing it's not. is it's taking its old stock of. Uh, 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 tanks and, 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 and munitions and whatnot is giving each of those things a value and then say, here, here are those tanks and therefore now you owe me $2 billion. So yeah. but from the budget perspective, they, or, they, they budgeted the $2 billion that they, that they sent over to Ukraine. But then what do they do with this money? They take this money and then they go to the, the US uh, military industrial complex and say, okay, here's $2 billion, give me X number of new tanks or X number of new javelins or whatever you, they got to sell at the time to replace what they have sent to Ukraine, right? So the the the, the problem here is it's not about the money. The problem here is that they they they're running out of things to give to Ukraine to put valuations on. Their stock is running low of the old old crap that they are sending there, right? So. The, and the, the new problem that they are facing is the capacity to produce more isn't, that, isn't quite there because the MIC in the US is all profit-based. Okay, sorry. I, my, my, ah, my doggy one we are me. immediately going to <laughs> win uh, 1,000 you. <laughs> came to say hi. Yeah. Uh, so the, the problem is in the US, they, the, the, the MIC is profit-based. So they, they need a lot, a lot like a long-term... Um, Uh, contracts to start building capacity and they're not willing to do that, right? So they, um, so the, 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 the problem about money, and, and you said something like, what, uh, $5 billion dollars to run for a month or a year or something in Ukraine, that's nonsense. They, if you go and for look USA at the salary, maybe, but the, the Europe at least is giving the Ukraine government directly money to pay the yes. state workers and yes. so on. Yeah, but the state workers don't get that paid that much. It, it's 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 you know maybe a few, maybe tens of millions or maybe a hundred million will cover their all their budgets for the for the entire year. It, it's it's uh, all of the rest. It's just cream for them to go buy houses in Spain. You know, so it's yes. uh, if you really want to if you really want to go down and see you know I mean you just do a calculation, just Google how much does. Uh, How much does a uh, government official uh, in the Ukraine make? And then multiply it by the number of officials in Ukraine. The number doesn't get that big, right? So what, what, where is the money going? Yeah? So, it's, uh, it, they, it's, so my answer is it's not going to collapse anytime soon because the, 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 in terms of military, 
they 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 are no never going to run out of things to send to you to Ukraine. They 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 will just keep on this trickle 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 of like you know uh, things. So they will never run out of missiles to fire. They will just have to fire less at, at a lower rate. And then uh, it really depends on what the Russians are going to do. If the Russians are going to be happy to sit at their current uh, lines and just slowly slowly push, this is going to take years. And the U.S. is never going to come out and say, oh, we've lost, we surrender. They might do that after uh, the next general election. So, for example, okay. if Trump comes in, might so for it. you, it's that, not about Europe. Please do. It's not about Europe to decide. Enfin, to decide, no, of course, it's not about Europe to decide. But the Europe is going to continue to give money to Ukraine. At least uh, until the USA stop to give weapon to Ukraine. Okay, yeah. so how many years? How many soldiers uh, so, do they still uh, have? Who cares about the number of soldiers? Will be the okay. next general election in the US. So <laughs> one to two years, okay. Yeah, minimum. Okay, okay. Depends so I'm going to go back to Poitain. Uh, Poitain, do you have a number of years for me? Uh, no, Shadovi. I think uh, oh, I think sad. I see I see more uh, I see more games playing on all over, and I really don't see it uh, enlarging much more. So I can see a hot. I, I really think it's going to be this year, but uh, I can see a hot uh, situation still running around for uh, for uh, 2024 as well. But not much further because it's impossible to keep the the pace. I know, um, of course, you guys, you understand. The thing is that what we see as a uh, as the pace. Well, Drew was already saying, after a while, they will have to shoot less uh, less uh, uh, rockets. Well, okay, right, it's true. Um, but uh, then we probably already are in a kind of um, ceasefire situation. The problem is that we can't keep on the ceasefire situation for much longer um, because otherwise it will restart again. And I don't think that will be the point. You see, the, the Europeans also okay, have a will. I'm on going it. to cut you immediately. It's... Why would Russia say, sign a ceasefire? No, ceasefire can happen without really being signed. It can happen by itself sometimes. Mm-hmm. Doesn't need to so be signed. You think uh, they are just going to stop to fight? No, I don't think so. I think many people have kind of previewed the collapse of the Ukrainian government and its military. Um, I don't know if that's really the case, but that could happen and could happen sooner than. I'm not a military expert, I just see the feelings. And I don't see it lasting much more because this war is too demanding. This is not like the civil war in Angola. You see, the civil war in Angola was very lasting, but a, a, an arms conflict would be like one in a month. A very bloody one, but not all the time. But this is a, conf a really hot conflict that is every day is happening. Uh, and and the, the front is huge and is really a hot front everywhere. So I, I, I feel that there will, there's going to be a collapse in one way or another, somewhere in time. And this will bring us not to a peace deal like Shadov is thinking about. I'm planning, I think I talk, I, I think most people won't understand what I'm talking about. I, it's very, it, it becomes too much foreseen. Uh, but I think after this, this conflict will end with a new With the new, um, no, please, but don't order. go there, don't go there, don't go there, please. I know what you're going to say, but uh, if you want, we are going to, to make that another topic for another video, okay? The N1 scenario. No, uh, it's okay, okay. Subject. So instead, in, instead of having, instead of having a peace deal, you have a global peace deal. That's pretty much that. Yes. A very easy point. Don't, don't go there, please, but uh, <laughs> we just don't have the Why? time. Why? Why? We'll make we another to topic one more. day. Sure. We have, but we, it's, no, it's pretty much. I think it's a topic who deserves a world recording, the N1 scenario. Right, so I see. We're speaking about it's... it another time. So, how many years until we end this Cold I'm War? To give you my no, own no, comments, you yes. To... yes, give me a second. I'm going to give you. 
I think the Cold War is going to end in 10 years now. And we'll start okay. very soon with some type of agreement, international agreement, which okay. doesn't involve either Ukraine or Russia. Okay, so my own point no, of view I on these things. Agree. I think the no, Western no, country no, are going to continue no, to give money to Ukraine forever, basically, because it's about ideology. It's not about treason. For them to give money to Ukraine is uh, their way to promote the Western ideology. So they are going to, even if the French poor people, the German poor people, the United Kingdom poor people are going to suffer even more. And I'm not speaking about USA because it's even worse, I think. They don't care. The politicians won't care about the suffering of their own people. They are just going to make sure that this war continues. Because to lose this, this war is not only a military defeat, not only a diplomatic defeat, but also an ideological defeat. Okay? It's going to, to put a stop, a very brutal one, to the progression of this ideology that the Western government is, has uh, now uh, all of them has it, basically. At least a lot of them. That's what I think. So, sadly, they are going to pay forever for this war. Well, my, that's uh, my point. For me, I don't, I, don't I don't think the it's world... going to be forever. Yes, of course. I don't, but that's not I don't my think question. My question is, for how long are they going to pay? Mm. So, so I, don't think... I would say forever. minimum, basically, like four years, to be honest. But, like, max, maybe, like, around seven to eight years. Because you have to understand that, like, a lot of these countries, they're still, like, the citizens are complaining, you know, like, if they don't be careful, they put, or they, like there will be a chaos in the street. In the street, because people gonna protest about it. Like here in the U.S., uh, you have to understand that Trump still wanna come out, like as, a, as, a, as a, come back for his, like you know, for his second term. And Biden cannot just defend himself. Oh yeah, oh, yeah we we are fighting against yeah. Russia in the Ukraine, all that stuff. You know, he can't just keep saying that. You understand? So because a lot of people that are back in Trump that I know of that. I, <clears throat> That I keep hearing is like they are against what's going on in Ukraine. So, so Trump, I'm pretty much sure Trump gonna use it against Biden. You understand? So Biden so can you have think to that speak Trump slowly, slowly. is going. Yeah? So you think Trump is going to pay anything to Ukraine? Uh, he probably gonna continue for a year or two, and then he will, he will definitely just leave it. Be like nope, <laughs> because you have to understand that Trump. I've been to his speech in the U.S. because I know a lot of people who were talking, marking him most of the time. When he was speaking at the General Assembly, I was there. I was like literally behind the, uh, uh, because they have, uh, 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 they have different positions where, where like uh, all the state members in the front and all the NGOs and all the media and other people in behind, when he was speaking, he, he liked to, sometimes he, he would say something that he, what he mean, and sometimes he just said things that he hear from the media or, or from social media to, you know, basically uh, put it out there. But he, he always mean what he says, to, most, to be honest. I don't, I, like, I, I used to love Trump before he became a president, before he started saying Mexican people are this and this and all that stuff. But since then, because I know I work with a lot of Mexican people and I know a lot of people that they, they're not, as you said, sometimes not everybody's like as bad people as you think. And immigrant, there are some immigrant people that are terrible, but that doesn't mean even some American themselves, the American that are born in America, they are terrible too. You know, it's not everybody's like everybody have the own little bit different people in situation. So mm, I, yes. I do think that I do think that he, he probably gonna stop it. He, he's so not gonna the, the, my, the question is immediately: Is he no, going no, to be able to stop like it? A, because there is a lot like of a people deal. in Washington who want yeah. this to continue. Like the yeah. military industrial complex. No. So I, they have a lot of power in Washington. Yeah, uh, no, no, definitely I understand. But this is I have question, to this answer will be get better given by Drew, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, Drew is, is Trump going to be able to stop? To jump at this. Because you, it's his you, typical you know corporation stuff. I have to say about Trump. You're going to get pissed at me, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, uh, like this. This is what happened. Use this CNN. They, they never. They don't have no break. But about CNN, uh, about Trump. I, I like. I like. What? How many years are you gonna keep talking about Trump? 
the guy is already out of office. Like, can you just leave him alone? Even though sometimes I disagree, I disagree with what he says, some of the things. But come on, man, it's too much. Just give him, just give the guy a break now. He's, he's no longer the leader. So just focusing on the situation going on in the country. But no, they always, because, you know, they have viewers that they think that's the only way they can make money, you know. But I'm pretty much sure Trump, you know, you know, it's, the guy, the one thing I'm going to be honest with you, he's really straight. If he said this, that's what he's going to do. It doesn't matter what his advisor says. He's going to do it. Because if you remember, I'm pretty much sure there was advising him against. I told uh, you, I you should ask years. this question to Drew. I told you, so, you should Drew, ask this question to Drew. <laughs> What do you think, Drew? Uh, uh, okay, uh, Trump. Uh, I think <laughs> he is he is, he, he is uh, one of the worst people to walk this earth. Uh, he is a racist. He's a bigot. He's a sexist. He is he is uh, you know it's only all about himself. That is his he has yeah. a giant ego, and the only. His only uh, redeeming factor is he's super, super, super lazy and incompetent. So when he is the U.S. president, nothing gets done. But when so, but you compare with a, a presidency where nothing gets done versus a presidency that actively does bad things to the rest of the world. Trump is a huge step up because nothing <laughs> happens. Yeah. So I I don't agree with anybody that says. I, I, I love the guy. No, the guy is a horrible. It's a horrible person that, that is lazy and plays golf every day. He just doesn't do anything, and that's good because all the rest of the U.S. politicians, when they do something, it hurts the rest of the world, right? So, if you want, you know, you want like a proper step forward, uh, you know, a guy that actually wants to do good and seems like he's been doing, uh, you know, active things. That 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 uh, that, that Jeff was it RFK guy. Uh, seems to be uh, like actively do trying to fix the problem, but of course he is kind of also part of the political establishment. So he's been saying things like, you know, to to end the Ukraine conflict, we're gonna kick Russia out, and then and, then, uh, and a bunch of that nonsense. Which yeah, it's uh, so. At, right now, I think if Trump gets elected, you'll be great for the rest of the world because he'll continue. The U.S. will do nothing for four years, and that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. And, okay, uh, but so I, I basically think you support I, Trump playing golf. I guess <laughs> and play as much as possible every day. Okay, get elected first, then play yeah. golf every day. That's 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 the and best thing. Problem, the rest of yeah, my problem is that it might be too late until the next elections. The the whole well, not too late in a kind of catastrophic way. In a way, that's not what I meant. And we lose Prata again. I guess in the way that um, the whole world is paralyzed, the international institutions have manipulated. It's, it was ex more than exposed that they are, that they are not functioning. Uh, and they find it uh, very difficult for the community of countries in this world to keep functioning in such a situation where it's very difficult to, to really deal with the partners in a, in a frank way. Of course, there was mm -hmm. always problems, oh, but the number... Hmm? I, I, I disagree. It's the opposite. The world is not paralyzed. The world is moving forward. The world. Yes, yes, the world I know. I think the Ukraine that's what I, is accelerating thing. I was going to go there. So what is happening is that many countries are finding parallel things. They are going forward, and the West is going out, staying out of that, of the business somehow, and they will want to come in. And this is the point. So in a way, the world is going forward. I know that you guys place a lot of expecting expectations in BRICS. Might not be BRICS like people say, but something very similar. But it doesn't matter. Something very similar. The, the, the world is going forward, is creating new institutions, is, is reconnecting with itself, but without the West in some time, in some in many, many fronts. And this will keep to evolve. So that's what, as I was saying, the situation like with the institutions we know, it's getting very comp the, the world institutions we had, it's get very get getting very complicated to work with. So new institutions are coming, or old institutions that have been forgotten are reborning in importance. And in this case, I see the West understanding they have isolated themselves. 
and they will want to get back in. And this is my point. I think this, this perspective I heard actually for the first time from Drew. <laughs> It's a question of time when actually the West, but, uh, the West but, uh, but, uh, understands. You are forgetting about ideology. Okay. No, I'm not. It's not to the West to rejoin the West of the world. It's for the West of the world to join the West. Okay, Jodovi, I It's understand very sad, that. But, uh, it's what how they think. No. Yes, when, I understand. You, This you will change. You can only have ideology when your tummy is full. When the rest, when you don't have enough money to buy things to feed yourself, then your ideology will fall away, and you'll go. You know, when you're hungry, then you realize, oh shit. The the okay, the so we are left to my question. Not How many years? <laughs> I'm joking, yeah. I'm joking. Don't try to answer. I already <laughs> understand that nobody wants to answer this uh, question. Sh Shadavi, Shadavi, let's put in things into the, into, to the ground. We have had in many countries now uh, some uh, climatic cat catastrophes which completely changed the, the year production of those countries. We have seen that actually in mostly in third world countries but this can happen also in Europe, which we haven't had, or in America, which is actually one of the biggest exporters of grains as well. But mostly for Europe, within Europe, within the, the, the rich world. What happens if they also live because climate change is for everybody there? What if one of these days they really get a big catastrophe, climate catastrophe, and they will left alone? This can happen. So it's not, it's not, there are many things happening at the same time. It is, and not everything is, is foreseeable. See? Of course it's That's my point. It's just a guess I ask people, you know? Yeah, no, I think when it's you course. make an estimation, you have to think about it. You have to think about the past, think about the present to try to anticipate the future. Okay? And the more you think, the better you are. That's why right. I always ask questions about the future. Because I want people to think. That's okay. why I try to analyze things. So, to answer your question, I'll say five years. Why? Five Because, years? Okay. Yeah, five years. Because the thing is that like, you cannot keep going forever. So, and, and many of these people cannot keep, like, like, people get tired of something maybe in a year or two, you know? And five years, I will put it there. Because nobody wanted to go uh, 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 crying, like, every time. Or why my, uh, I can't pay my bills? Why, uh, like, you know? why I can't take my kids like to places I want to take them, you know, like all this stuff and stuff because of, you can't just keep telling them the excuse. Oh yeah, we support the Ukraine. We support the Ukraine. You can't, you can't sell that for five years, man. Come on. Okay. Oh, That yes, they can. For me. Please, that... Alpha, thank yeah. you. Yes, they can. The question is if, if we have a monetary system collapsing, this can also happen. Ah, another huh? point. So how many years, Pata? I think there is too many enigmas. I think the world is yes, changing. Yes, I know. For I just want forward. to guess. But you can't sell that to your population for five give years. Give me a number. I'll turn down, please. Point. But give me a number. I, I, I told you that the world in 10 years will be very different from now. Okay, 10 years. At least it's a number. And do you remember? Just for fun? Uh, from... from... Uh, How many okay, years what, could what, the West what? pay for the war? Before something Would very bad happened. For the war? Yes. Uh, forever. It's never going to stop. Yes, you think like me, <laughs> never going to stop. Very sad, <laughs> don't but uh, I have the same Iraq. one. Okay. There's still pain okay, okay. for Iraq. If you, yeah, if so you know, know, it's time to make some kind of closure. So I'm going to ask uh, each of you, one at a time, to speak what you want for everybody about this subject or about something else. I'm going to begin by the new talker, Alpha. If you want to say something for the closure. Okay. So, uh, basically, what I want to say is to, to ECOWAS and African Union is that please do not start this war because if you start it, it's like uh, breaking the camel back. It's not going to be a war that's going to end in a year or two. That's going to continue at least up to five to six years minimum. Because you have to understand, many countries in, uh, outside of Africa have interests in Africa. And some of these countries, they're not just going to sit back and let the interests get in school. As you can hear what, what, friends, what, what, uh, what the French president said, if our interests get, uh, 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 get threatened, we will do everything in our power 
to protect it. So, and if now Russia, like yesterday I was looking at, in the media was saying that Russia was warning about getting involved in, uh, in Niger, and that's even making it even more worse. You understand? So now basically we are going back to like the, uh, like the, uh, uh, the, when, when America and Soviet Union used to go back and, uh, back and forth within like coups and taking care, like taking other countries out because they don't support them or leader doesn't support them. So what I would say is to them, to advise them, please find a way uh, uh, how to uh, solve this issue instead of trying to send in troops and, and you know, start this war. Because I believe that like most of the schools start because, first of all, uh, uh, because of bad infrastructure in their countries. And secondly, it's because of uh, 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 the elections are not clear or, or this, some of these leaders are basically uh, uh, like changing the constitution, trying to run for short term or trying to run for more than the term that they're supposed to. And the, the other thing is that the lack of uh, 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 opportunity for people to work, like young people to work. And that's why a lot of people, a lot of young people in West Africa especially, specifically are going to like, like willing to reach their life trying to cross the Mediterranean or go to, you know, like America and die in, 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 uh, uh, on the way to those countries, you know? So trying to figure out if you're in that country having those type of issues, why not as the leader? Trying to figure out a way to solve it. Because if you don't solve it, if, you're, if your soldiers overthrow you, the people are going to support the soldiers because they see that it's a change. They're looking for a change. So if you want your soldiers and your people to back you up, Make sure you do these things. So that's all I have to say for now. Thank you. Okay, Drew, your turn to make a closure. Well, uh, I don't have a lot to say. I just uh, want to uh, comment a bit about what Alpha said uh, about the... Uh... <sighs> I lost my train of thought. Prata, can you go first? I will collect myself and rejoin. Uh, I think uh, we most people will agree that the Ukrainian war had something new that we haven't seen it before. And in that sense, I also think uh, this is the prelude of uh, a new age. And uh, if you look at the fact that international law has been so much damaged, we saw these periods before the Second World War, we saw the, uh, the First World War, we saw it then on the on the Second World War, and this gave birth to more resilient systems all the time, more resilient systems of uh, managing uh, countries together. I think we are back to the the era of the state, which is not so bad. I think corporations took too much the lead for a couple of years. We might see the states coming back. We might might be also the other way around, around corporations and states will be integrated in a more coherent system. Let's see what happens. But I really think there will be a new international order very soon because the international law that we have had for a long time is completely broken. It has been used and abused for everybody and nobody trusted and relies on it anymore. And for business to go and for countries to deal with each other, they need a base of understanding and common trust. For that to happen, it doesn't mean it will happen immediately now. That's why I said, I think in 10 years, the world will be very different. We do need a new understanding how the countries deal with each other. And I think uh, our hope as humankind before the Third World War will be that the countries will come together and find new understandings how to deal with it, how to create trust between themselves, which is gone, now is gone. Sorry. Okay. Do something I, else? I remember, what I, I remember what I wanted to say. Uh, the, the, your comment uh, about term limits. Yeah. Actually, term limits are a horrible idea. Uh, every country, if you can, should get rid of them. Because uh, term limits are a... It, it's a flat tool. You get rid of all the... Uh, it's, it's a way to prevent the bad people from continuing. But at the same time, you're also preventing the good people from continuing. So how do you, it doesn't make that, 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 that judgment of whether you're good or bad. So if you have a good leader, you want him to continue forever. You want him to, you know, stay there for as long as he can and then, you know, transfer power peacefully to the next guy who hopefully has been identified as a good leader and continue from there. At the end of the day, 
none of us are going to be uh, leaders of our countries. So, you know, what we can hope for, uh, it, it's just like all, all the countries in the world, none, most of them can't be the hegemon. So they, 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 they don't really care whether it's the US or China or Russia that's going to be the hegemon. We as people, we don't really care who's, who is the, the one person who's going to be like the prime minister or president. But as long as the prime minister or president does good things uh, for us, that, that, that improves our lives, as long as the hegemon of that world is a constructive hegemon, you know, instead of starting coups everywhere, they go around uh, building infrastructure and doing trade deals. That's the kind of hegemon we want, right? So I, I, I don't care if the hegemon or the, you know, is, is, is the US or Russia or China or India or any other country. I don't care who the prime minister is. At the end of the day, uh, we, we, we need to look for, uh, we need to find and then keep the good president and prime minister or good hegemon. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that's. Uh, wow. Can I just add something to it? Because yes. I think time limit is good because, like, I, I, like I, I said, I'm from Guinea. Like, we have we have two presidents, yeah. right? The, the other one was at least 25 to 26 years as a president. And the other one was 25 something years as a president. But in between those two, there are some changes, as you were saying. But the thing is that as soon as these people feel comfortable and when, when they, they are leaders, right? They do things that they don't, they don't feel like they're going to get any uh, a back, backlash, basically. That's why it's good to have term, terms, because they know if they don't do well this time, next term, they're probably going to get kicked out anyway. So for, for them just keep going forever, not only that they're going to keep taking down resources, they'll be corrupt, they will they'll they'll feel like there's no punishment for them, so basically. That's all I have yeah, to say. So... But because in, in, in Africa alone, because like, like what I'm just going to say, in Africa alone, like as I said, in Guinea, you have to understand the, the, there's two leaders alone. They've been for president for 50 years. 50, uh, for 50 years, if you combine both of them, and what, what Guinea get? Guinea have one of the most, uh, one of the most like resources in, in, in Africa, but we still have an issue with electricity, uh, 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 good roads, hospitals, <laughs> you know, all that type of stuff. If if they was hard. if they was doing well. Yeah. Like with those long terms, and they feel like okay, if they don't do well, they're gonna get kicked out. They probably will do something much better. You understand? Mm. Even Alpha Conde, yes, he knew that he was he was getting kicked out, but he built some stuff. Like he 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 did the uh, relationship with the Chinese to build the so electricity are... dam. Yeah, sure. but, but the problem is that he he, he get the bad side. So, of so we are we are doing a new recording. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so I'm, I'm yeah, doing a new recording. Thank you. I don't want to get. <laughs> don't worry, Alfred. We are on the closing. We'll take another time. Uh, thank so, you. I just have uh, one statement. I just have one statement to to a very short one. Yes, uh, saying there should not be term limits doesn't mean it's not the same as saying there are no other mechanisms to remove a political leader. I'm saying term limits are a bad mechanism. It doesn't mean there are no other mechanisms that should be in place to remove a bad political leader. There are many, many examples of good mechanisms to get rid of political leaders. A term limit is not one of them. Okay, so I'm just going to, yes. to, uh, to close the scene. And I think as well we realize that each country has its political process and it, it can't export to er everywhere what we have in one country to another. So it's very difficult. Shadovi, you're, you're closing. Yes. Yes, I really hope that uh, there is not going to be a war in this part of the world in Africa because there is already so much problem in uh, Africa. They have to solve for themselves that uh, they don't need uh, inter uh, foreign uh, interference in their own uh, lo lo local problem to make the things worse. Because the Niger situation is basically what? It's a local coup that become international incident because of uh, France declaration, and because of uh, new land travels, because of uh, ambition as the Nigeria president, because of a lot of things like that. And uh, maybe it's just a Niger problem. Maybe, I don't know. So I just hope there is not going to be any war, because war is horrible uh, wherever it is in Europe or in Africa. And so I'm going to finish and tell uh, 
every talker, thank you for coming to speak uh, with us today, especially to Alpha, who is new today. So thank I'm you. closing the video now. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. It was amazing.